as the legal brain behind all that we're going to be discussing today. Will Robert Mueller, just based on the testimony, the statement that was released by the former FBI director, James Comey, will he be able to draw a conclusion that the president did attempt to obstruct justice just on that statement alone? Or will we have to hear something from Comey today in his testimony to get that conclusion? Well, I think Robert Mueller is at the very beginning of his investigation. And I don't expect Robert Mueller to come to any conclusion about whether or not he thinks there was obstruction of justice uh, by Mr. Trump or by any associates of Mr. Trump you know, or even involving any question of collusion with Russia on simply on the basis of James Comey's testimony. I think that Bob Mueller is about as thorough a prosecutor as it gets, that this is one piece of evidence that he will consider. I am sure that he will also, if not watch it live, at least watch a video replay of it because it's not only what Mr. Comey is going to say, it's how Mr. Comey is going to say it. You have nuance here because the meetings of Trump and Comey, the conversations, are in and of themselves nuance. And by the way, it's not up to Mr. Comey as a witness to conclude legally if there's obstruction of justice. That's up to Mr. Mueller. And he has, uh, surrogates uh, close to the former FBI director have said that he does not intend to offer his legal opinion as to whether or not this is obstruction of justice. He's going to leave that to the Senate and to uh, uh, Robert Mueller. The question is, Ricky, for you, and we should point out that you know uh, Jim Comey and Robert Mueller in a professional setting, uh, but the question I think a lot of people have is just based on your many years as a lawyer, do you see obstruction of justice in what the president was doing here? Based on reading the statement that Mr. Comey released yesterday, I do not see a conclusion of obstruction of justice at this point in time. You have to remember that what you wind up with is you need the intent to corruptly influence, to impede. You need that intent. And it certainly seems from what we have read, we'll see what Mr. Comey says today, that even when Mr. Trump said about uh, General Flynn, let it go, that that was trumping Trump. That was not saying, I'm directing you to let it go. Because if it was, in fact, a direction, I would expect Mr. Comey to do something more than simply write a memo to the file. And yet, when, when the president says, do you like your job, when he knows that the FBI director is in office for 10 years, he asks him about his job, and he asks him to lift this cloud several times. He talked to Jim Comey about the Russia investigation, and then he fires the FBI director. Certainly for those of us who are not lawyers, we'd look and we'd say, if that happened to me at work, if a boss came to me and said, how do you like your job, and will you do this for me, and I don't necessarily do it to his liking, and I get fired, I wouldn't I be able to go to my HR or my lawyer and say, my boss fired me because I wouldn't carry out his action? His yes, intent. you would. Yeah. Um, legally, what we have here is not simply what happened in those various conversations when you're looking for a conclusion of is it obstruction of justice or not. From a purely legal perspective, you do have to look at the arc, and the arc does end with the firing. So whether or not there's ultimately a conclusion that this was a an intention to corruptly influence, and that when he was not going to sit, sit down and just let everything go, and if, in fact, he asked for more funding and then he was fired, then you have another story. But I think looking at it at face value, which is all I can do today, because all I can do before we've heard him is look what is written or what has been written about, I don't think you quite get to obstruction of justice. You may get very, very bad, ill-advised behavior on the part of President Trump, but it's a far cry from that to coming up to the level of what we consider a crime. All right, let me go to Ed, uh, who's joining us uh, remotely here. Ed, uh, Washington Post has been all over this story from the very, very beginning. I thought it was fascinating yesterday that Senator John McCain was holding up an article from the Washington Post, the one headline, top intelligence officials told associates Trump asked him if he could intervene with Comey on the FBI Russia probe, and uh, Senator McCain called it an Orwellian existence that we're living in right now, in that the four men that were testifying before the Senate Intelligence Committee he refused to answer any of the questions or, or to confirm any of what was reported in the Washington Post. Sort of take us through what your analysis is up to this point and what we can expect after Jim Comey testifies. 
Well, first off, we appreciate the free advertising from lawmakers whenever they do that. That's very helpful. Uh, look, what, what happened yesterday was, was not helpful for those intelligence officials who once again infuriated lawmakers by declining, at least in a public setting, to discuss the details of their conversations with the president. It seemed that they were alluding to the idea that they weren't comfortable doing it, at least not yet, in public and would prefer to have that conversation in a classified setting. Uh, but the fact that they didn't more strongly deny everything and just sort of give a blanket denial, I think, leaves open the possibility here that, uh, and I don't doubt it, that, uh, that our reporting was accurate and, and, and it reflects what exactly went on between the president and at least Director Coates. Look, today is, is a different setting, however. This is a witness, remember, who asked for this opportunity and who was eagerly given it by members of both parties, Republicans, because they want to get this out there and get it out of the way, and Democrats, because they believe, despite the legal analysis to the contrary, that the president did indeed obstruct justice or that the evidence is building in that direction. So I think today you'll see Democrats especially give him an opportunity to say his piece, uh, to, to take him into all aspects of his interactions with the president, whereas Republicans and some of the Democrats are probably going to push back and focus on Comey's behavior and his work specifically. Why didn't he raise concerns sooner? Uh, what, what was he telling other FBI or Justice Department officials about those interactions? And was it odd, really, to have had nine interactions with the president in the first four months of his presidency versus apparently just two with President Obama over the course of their work together in the last administration. So, uh, you know, and, and it's important to remember, too, because senators have gone to great lengths to point this out. This is just one piece of a wider probe. This is one opportunity for one witness to discuss what he knew about the situation. And nobody believes that it's over after today or that this presents all of the evidence that would be needed to take this to the next level. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people have said, look, after today's testimony, uh, both sides are going to claim some level of victory here. Uh, yeah. Democrats are going to say, you see, uh, the president did try to at least impede the investigation into Russia. And the Republicans are going to say, look, the president of the United States was vindicated, as was uh, the note that we saw yesterday from President uh, Trump's uh, uh, counsel, that the president feels vindicated. You had Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham, saying it was a pretty good day for Donald Trump, meaning yesterday in that uh, Director Comey, former FBI Director Comey, indicated in his statement that he did indeed tell President Trump that he himself was not the subject of that investigation. Right. And so, yes, from a personal standpoint, from a legal standpoint for the president, perhaps it's, 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 it's a fine day. But there are serious questions still about whether he was aware at all of what other associates were doing and why is it that he continues to bungle this by tweeting about it, by attempting to divert attention away from it, and by attempting to get the investigators to change the subject and look elsewhere. All of that, even if it isn't illegal, is certainly improper and messy. And that is still enough for, for Congress, at least, to keep investigating. And, and now that there's a special investigation underway, this could drag out for the next 18 months to two years and, and, and keep that cloud in place that the president was so eager to remove and was asking Comey to do something about. All right, CBS News contributor and Washington Post reporter Ed O'Keefe, I know you, had, you got to get into that hearing. Ed, thank you so much for your analysis and your reporting. We'll talk to you after the testimony. Thank you. Take care, Vlad. All right, let's talk the politics here, Leslie. Uh, when... Former President Bill Clinton met with the Attorney General Loretta Lynch. There were calls by the Republicans for uh, Loretta Lynch to come out of office. They wanted the FBI director. They wanted Jim Comey there. They thought that was obstruction of justice. They were on the record saying this is obstruction of justice. Something's got to be done about that. Why does this not feel like obstruction of justice to Republicans now? I think some would argue that it would. I think very much to Ricky's points, though, they know that they're unpacking a tremendous amount. And to use one of Donald Trump's references, this is a Pandora's box. That's exactly what he said when he referred to that meeting with, between Clinton and, and uh, former Attorney General Loretta Lynch. The, the distinction is this is causing tremendous uh, political problems, not only because they don't know which way the wind's going to go, but also just a, a, another thing to think about. With respect to what the, the uh, intelligence officers had to do yesterday in their testimony and putting all this together and that they refuse to answer any of those questions, it's going to ratchet that level up. So not only does it prolong kind of the, the jujitsu process, political process that's happening behind the scenes, but it's also obviously a PR problem for the president. So there's no easy way out. I would tell you the phone's been ringing all night strategically trying to think and and I think the best 
anecdote that came out of it was a lot of members you're going to see today are going to have intense cross-examination. They don't want to look particularly partisan that because they don't really know where it's And we fall. did see that yesterday, Jolina. Mm -hmm. We did see Senator Marco Rubio asking some very, very right. pointed questions. Uh, John McCain, as I referenced with Ed, called it an Orwellian existence. Mm -hmm. We know that Senator McCain himself has been a very staunch supporter right. of the former FBI director. Um, but on the other hand, Democrats, after that infamous mm -hmm. letter that the FBI director, when he was still in office, uh, when he was still director of the FBI, sent right before the election had a lot of Democrats right. upset, right. saying that he tilted the election towards Donald Trump. Now they're all coming out in support of him. What's your take? Well, I think that, you know, it's interesting that this, the trajectory of all of this, because as you started, the meeting with Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton is how we got here, essentially, right? Because that led um, to the Comey letter on October the 27th, because Loretta Lynch recused herself because Donald Trump and other Republicans criticized that meeting on the tarmac. So clearly Donald Trump understood that in that context, it was inappropriate for the attorney general to meet with Bill Clinton about an ongoing investigation. It's funny now that the defense is, well, he didn't know. He's new at politics. Um, so clearly in the past, when it was Democrats, he understood it completely. And now he's going to be held accountable uh, for his actions. And I think that, um, back to uh, the point that Ricky made earlier, this actually ends with the firing. That actually is a part of the narrative uh, when you're talking about obstruction of justice. It's not just the nine meetings and conversations that he had with former Director Comey. It's also the fact that it ended with his firing and then subsequently lying about the real reason they fired him um, and then Trump essentially admitting it in an interview with Lester Holt. And so that totality, I think, is what is going to present perhaps a legal problem down the road for the president. But again, it's up to Bob Mueller to, to come to the bottom it's of just that. A point. And I'm being the Republican, mm -hmm. unfortunately, saying, you know, the president adding that that, that Kobe was a nut job, you know, right. And, right. And, and also show voter. Show voter. Right, right. And, and then Enduring. confirming, I mean, it, it is, look, at the end of the day, a lot of Americans are going to say, if he hadn't fired mm -hmm. Jim Comey, all of those things would be true, right. you know, even to the point that he's a nut job. But the fact that he fired him afterwards, and then in that letter that indicated why he was being fired, it was for being political. It was right. for interfering in the election. And in fact, the president then confirmed mm -hmm. to NBC News that he fired him because of the rest of the Right. Message. So the question is going to become, is he reacting because of wounded pride and political incompetence, or mm -hmm. is it really a deliberate action that he's taking? Right. I don't think we're going to get to that second part, but Republicans feel like they're skating, you know, they're walking on an icy street trying to cross an icy street when it comes to this whole situation. Yep. And, and that's why I think the details will really matter here. And we have the testimony, but we don't yet have the questions from the lawmakers. And if, if yesterday was any indication, uh, that is really key here, to see how some of these lawmakers react uh, to what Comey has to say or try to get information. That will tell us a lot about where they think things are politically. And another little nugget in uh, yesterday, in the statement released yesterday, is that Comey made sure to say, I I did not even uh, document any of my conversations with President Obama. But it was my, uh, from the first meeting on forward after with President Trump, or with pre President-elect Trump, documented every meeting. So that was interesting to me, because that suggested that he, at the time, felt that there was something going on, that he needed to document it at the time. Because you will be sure that lawmakers, as Ed mentioned, will say, why didn't you uh, flag this up earlier? Why are you saying all of this now? That is a very uh, true question. That's a good question. Uh, but I think he might point to that. Uh, statement that he made saying I've been documenting this for a while now.